So I received this card here for free because it had some major overheating issues. And this here is a 1080 Ti Seahawk uh, by MSI slash uh, Course Ear. They have really fitted a standard IO to it. I think it's a um, Course Ear H55. So the problem was that it was overheating even at idle. And of course, since this is a AO card that is now like six years old, I was suspecting that we had an issue with the AO. But the card itself seemed to be working without any issues. The only thing was that we had this loud noise from the pump. And we can see the temperatures here at idle are just really high. So if we were to put any load on it, we would see some really heavy thermal throttling. Disassembling the card is very easy, just a few screws to take off the shroud and the AO cooler and also opens the AO cooler which is fastened with a few torque screws and underneath the plate we could see that we had a lot of missing fluid so I was just thinking of maybe trying to fill it back up to see if that would work. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that uh, the gasket around here was really like hard and brittle and when I was mounting everything back together uh, it really stopped working for some reason so I just scrapped that idea we could maybe find a new H55 cooler the mounting bracket would fit directly onto a CPU uh, H55 cooler but since these coolers are fairly old they are hard to come by at a good price and even if it's new uh, we don't really know the condition of it so maybe in a short time we would see the same problem with a new H55 cooler but yeah I was just taking it off and looking inside and here we have like the impeller but it turned out the manufacturer of the H55 cooler is like Corsair they are like rebranding another product made by a uh, different manufacturer but this design is used on this NCXT cooler still so I just mounted the plate over to this NCXT cooler and the only thing is the screws that go into the cooler and maybe felt they were a, a little bit too long so I'm um, like because there was a lot of resistance screwing in the last part so I was really, really afraid of like puncturing like the inside of it so maybe do something with the screws to make them shorter but otherwise it didn't really seem to leak uh, in my one either and then I was thinking of using this like plate uh, from the old cooler since we see here we can't really mount just the new cooler directly onto it because the CPU no, I mean the GPU die is like underneath that plate there, so we need something in between here. So I was thinking of using this here as a kind of a shroud or spacer. But since it's got all of these like cooling things on the back, I was just thinking of grinding it off because it's copper, it's fairly soft. But yeah, that turned out to be a huge failure even after a long time. Uh, it turned out to me that copper isn't as soft as I believe, believed it to be. So I found this lamp here and took that copper plate out where the LEDs were mounted, grinded it all flat and down, and then we can mount everything back together like here with that spacer in between, uh, which is just a pure copper spacer. So as long as you got some kind of metal or copper, I think we are good but uh, I just didn't really know where I could get like a copper spacer like this so I, fi I found that to be the easiest and it was also a free solution for me so we could mount back the shroud on the card but I don't really think it does too much uh, we can see that there was like some directioning of the ear so it won't go over those small heatsink in the back for the power delivery it's only like blowing over uh, the plate holding the card together and maybe cooling the memory modules a little bit I'm not sure but here we can see everything and 
I think it's a good configuration. You don't really have to use that shroud. And we basically have two fan cables for the fans, and then you can set up how you want the fan curves in your BIOS. I just left it as stock, so it's just following the CPU. Worked out fine. We could get, of course, even better cooling if we just crank them up and such. And then we have this uh, power for the pump and also this SATA for power for the pump or the RGB on the pump, I'm not real sure. Then we also have this USB connection where we can um, hook up it to USB into your computer and then I think we can change the pump configuration when it comes to RPM and such in the NCXT app, even though I didn't really bother with that. Uh, and when we have the card, uh, we can see that the AO cooler now is a 240 millimeter. You could go with a 120, but the 240 was like the same price, so and better cooling, so why not? And we can see here with the standard at idle with the standard fan curve for my PC, 57% there. We got really good temperatures like 20 degrees or something on the GPU die so no problems here and I was using like a thermal imaging camera just checking everything and this here is idle and we can see all the temperatures and such are really fine and there's no issues here and this is like the M2 SSD at the idle that gets always seems to get fairly hot and this is idle, I directed the camera underneath to maybe look more at the memory modules. So I suspect the memory modules are directly under here somewhere. And we can see even without like the shroud, it doesn't really do any big difference. Maybe 30 degrees somewhere at idle, no problems. And if you crank up it at mining, so putting a lot of strain on the memory and then playing a video, uh, we can see that we see good good temperatures on the card itself uh, but I really want to just uh, check the memory, memory temperatures even though we can't see that in hardware managers for this type of cars I think that's more for the later higher series of the first series like 3080 maybe 3070 and 3090 but we can see here underneath 40 degrees maybe like 50, 60, 70 degrees in the, I think it's a GTR6 memory, it's no issue at all. So, yeah, we don't really need that shroud, and I don't really think that fan makes that much big of a difference in way. But playing some games, uh, no issues at all. This is basically a 1080 Ti, but I would think that we get some really good performance because it seems I've really not looked too much into it. But it seems to be um, at least tuning itself fairly high when it comes to frequency and such. And we can see that we get really good temperatures. So since we have some mass in the cooler itself, it takes some time for it to heat up. But when it's heat up at max like boost clock and uh, max usage, we maybe see like 60, 70, 70 degrees absolute top and that is really good and we can even ramp up the um, speed on the pump itself and also the fan speed uh, but yeah we don't really need that because 70 degrees is still really good and coming down to 63 degrees here and when we go to idle and uh, the temperatures also drop really fast which is good Otherwise, I was just playing a few games here. So Vanguard uh, 1440p Ultra. I wouldn't really call it too good of a performance with the 1080 Ti. It's playable, but when you get into situations where fast moving and then an explosion just gets too low FPS. So maybe playing at 1440p medium or 1080p high, like we do here in the last clip. It makes more sense.